Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for those who are tuned in today um, for our Sunday School Review. Um, as always, let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you. Lord, I ask that you would guide my words. I ask, Father, that you would settle us down in your truth. I pray that you would break barriers, strongholds that are holding us strong, lies from the enemy, and anything that comes against our freedom in Christ. Lord, your word says, for freedom Christ has set us free. And for us not to be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Help us today to be free to love. And to live the life that you called us to live. Have mercy on our souls. Forgive us for every sin in Christ Jesus. Help us to know that we've been forgiven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is Frederick Robinson, uh, youth pastor of Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. Um, we certainly give praises to God for my being here today and um, to my pastor, Dr. Clyde May, for another blessed privilege. And I do mean a privilege to share God's word with God's people um, to my Liberty family, the Libertonians, amen, uh, to my wife, April, my daughters, Carly and Kaylee, to just all of God's people. And if there's any who may be lost uh, on the wrong side, on the enemy side, I pray God's grace and mercy upon each and every one of our lives. Amen. Today we have a beautiful lesson uh, for our lesson 12, May 22nd, 2022, title Free to Love. Our printed passage is Galatians 5, 1 through 15. Um, our lesson aim says, as a result of experience in this lesson, the participants should be able to do these things. Discern the differences between legalism and freedom that comes with responsibility. Uh, experience freedom as trusting in the work of Christ rather than their own efforts for salvation and choose a life of freedom in Christ that is guided by serving and love, loving others with humility. Again, choose a life of freedom in Christ that is guided by serving and loving others with humility. Amen. We we'll actually uh, jump right into the lesson. Our lesson and focus says over time, most people grow to appreciate the value of having a clear set of rules for success. Most of us learn early on that we can learn life's lessons the hard way or rely on the wisdom of experience and the blessing of rules that are written to spare us from pain, pitfalls and hardship of making our way by trial and error. When we reject wisdom, we create needless difficulty in matters that could have been simple for us. Pleasing God is not complicated. One does not have to be a theologian or possess some advanced knowledge of scriptures or have a mystical revelation of God. Watch this. The Bible is filled with instructions on exactly what is required to live a godly life, bless others, and please God. Fortunately, all its instructions can be summed up in a simple word, love. Having a sincere love of God and others and for ourselves is a simplified formula for assessing the true freedom for which the human heart longs. Amen. Um, as we look at this lesson, I want us to go right into uh, verse 1 
where, uh, and this is the NIV, and this is Galatians 5. So if you don't have a Sunday school book, open your Bible and turn to Galatians 5. Um, but Galatians 5 and 1 says this. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself to be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we have hope. Mm. Wow, so much said in that section there. But um, I want to do this. So the commentary says the Apostle Paul makes an affirmative statement of fact regarding our liberty in Christ. His affirmation is followed by an appeal to stand in that liberty and not be involved again in bondage. In some ways, it is easier for one to live as a slave than to make proper use of his or her freedom. That's a mouthful. In some ways, I'm going to repeat that, it's easier for one to live as a slave than to make proper use of his or her freedom. Paul emphasized that the Gentile believers with no background in circumcision must choose between Christ and circumcision or the law. Absolutely no one, whether Jew or Gentile, can negotiate with God to win favor or privilege privilege based on legalistic works and rituals. Originally, circumcision was established by God as a sign and seal of righteousness, which is delivered to the believer by faith. Over the course of time, it had become a pointless badge of merit among Jews. Those who choose to live by legalism were putting themselves under obligation to perfectly do that which Jesus already did for us, obtain justification by perfectly obeying the whole law. To lift up circumcision or any aspect of the law as a requirement for salvation means rejecting salvation by grace in favor of the impossible attempt at self-righteousness. The true believer stands in grace while the legalist is bogged down in insecurity that comes from not knowing whether he or she has done enough to satisfy the standard of divine grace. Amen. Those who are justified by faith have the spirit as the pledge of their acceptance with God. Through Christ, we can stand with bold confidence as we await the fulfillment and consummation of our faith, which is the hope of righteousness and glory. Wow. Wow. So Paul says to this group of Galatians who um, the Judaizers had crept into this church and this body of believers and had told them that they had to be circumcised in order to be saved. It was Christ plus circumcision. Christ, what they were teaching was Christ was not enough. It, it's almost like somebody saying Christ plus baptized, Christ plus uh, helping a lot of people, Christ plus communion. And if you don't take communion three times a week, then you're not saved. Uh, Christ plus um, you got to fast twice a week like the Pharisees did. Um, as Jesus talked about this Pharisee that says he fasted twice a week and he did this and he did that. And he said, thank you, God, when they were praying that I'm not like this tax collector, you know, but the tax collector just beat on his breast. And he said, Father, have Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said that the man who just said, have mercy on me 
was justified more than the man who trusted in his own righteousness. And that's why Paul said in Galatians 5 and 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you, if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be no of no value to you at all. The moment we leave Christ to try to find salvation in our own self-righteousness or in anything else, we've just left our only hope. Jesus Christ, I want to say this as plain as I can, emphatically, he is our only hope. He's our only way to God. Faith in Christ alone is the only way to be saved. If you're hoping that you're going to get to heaven by the stuff you do, in hell, you will lift your eyes. Jesus said it this way. He said, many are going to say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out devils? Didn't I prophesy? Didn't I do many wonderful works in your name? And he said that he's going to say, depart from me. You who work iniquity, get these words, for I never knew you. These people went out and did all of this miraculous stuff, but they did not know the Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why the commentary said absolutely no one, whether Jew or Gentile, can negotiate with God to win favor or privilege based on legalistic works or rituals. I'm just trying to tell you, this is liberating. This, these lessons, these, you know, the title of this said this. It said these are liberating letters. And I thank God for these letters because let me say something. When you first come to Christ and you first get saved, you're on fire for the Lord and you're going out and you're trying to win the world for him. But after you settle down a while and you start living for him and the trials start coming and the tests start coming and the pain starts coming, after you've been in this thing for a while, it what happens is you then have the danger of legalism. You didn't worry about this because when you first trusted in Christ, you grabbed hold to him with all you had because he was your only hope. But watch this. When you start living for him, when you start helping people, when you start reading your Bible, when you start spending time in meditation and you do all of these rituals, and you do all of these ordinances, baptism, the Lord's cup. If you're not careful, some people will try to make you think your salvation is in the Lord's cup or it's in your baptism. But the word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life, shall never perish. Abraham believed in the Lord and it was accounted to him as righteousness. What did Abraham do? <laughs> He didn't lift one finger. You know what he did? He believed in the Lord and the Lord, account, that pure faith in the Lord accounted it as right. I wrote something down I want to share with you in my study of 
Romans 4 last night and it reads this way it's I, what what was written what God gave me is pure faith in Jesus alone feels risky and scary at first but keep on walking in this way and you'll soon discover there lies a solid foundation that few are standing upon. I'm going to read that one more time. Listen closely. Pure faith in Jesus Christ alone. I'm talking about apart from anyone or anything you do, just pure faith in Jesus alone feels risky and scary at first. But keep on walking in this way. You will soon discover there lies a solid foundation <laughs> that few are standing upon. In other words, there's few people who's actually really, really trusting holy in Jesus. And that's what Paul was trying to get these Galatians to, to see. He was trying to get, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised, he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have alienated yourself from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. It's, the gra it's by God's grace that we've been saved. I got to cling to this grace and never let it go. Amen. Some of the things, some of the legalistic, some of the rituals, you know, I found myself doing certain things, having certain patterns and structures, what time I'm going to read, um, how long I'm going to read. God just came and wrecked all that. that. You know, I got into a period where I was spending time with God. I was fasting with God, which none of those things are wrong. But I got into a point where I felt like I was being justified by those things. And I felt like I'd be condemned if I didn't do them the same way all the time. And it literally has been taken the power of God. And he's still working on me. I don't know why I'm telling this. This might help somebody. But it take, it's taken the power of God to pull me out of these legalistic mindset. Let me say, so if the enemy can't get you, if he know you're not going to change your mind for living for God, then he's going to try to use God's word against you. But the devil is a lie. He'll try to use God's word to manipulate you and tie you in to a legalistic, law-keeping, rule-keeping, uh, ritual-keeping mindset, which will put you back in bondage. That's why he told, I'm going to say this and I'm moving on. That's why he told him, y'all stand firm. Stand, stay free in the liberty where Christ has made you free. And do not go back into bondage. Amen. Verse 6 says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. He said, You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. And then he says, I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever he may be, will have to pay the penalty. The Judaizers and their erroneous and false teaching had hindered the Galatians' spiritual progress and undermined their confidence and understanding. Watch this of the sufficiency of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to save them. Wow. Paul told, Jesus Christ, this is all Paul would really tell them, is enough. You don't need anything else. The thief on the cross who believed in Jesus Say, remember me, Lord, when I, when I come into your kingdom. And Jesus told him, this day, you shall be with me in paradise. Woo! 
He wasn't baptized. He didn't fast. He didn't go to church. He didn't get a chance to read his Bible. He didn't read John, Mark, Luke, James, Peter. The God, he, he didn't do any of that. He just said, Lord, remember me. <laughs> my, my. Am I saying that you don't have to do any of those things? Absolutely not, because they contribute to our spiritual growth. But never get confused with what you do in comparison to what he's done. As I'm walking with the Lord, he's teaching me, Fred, it's not what you do. It's your faith in what I done. And, and when you trust in what I done, it spills over into what you do and it sets you free while you do it. There's many people who are living for the Lord, but they're not free. They're in bondage. They're tied up. They're afraid that if they don't do one thing, God is going to wipe them out. If I mess up one time, one more time, he's going to wipe me. Well, you might, if that's your thought, you might well give up because you're going to mess up again. Amen. I'm going to mess up. Amen. I'm, and I'm not speaking negativity. But it's a reason that mercy is given. It's a reason that grace is is what we depended on. Because God knows that in our own strength, we're not going to be able to love. That's folk who going to do it so bad. But he told, he told us in this, he said, he said, you did run well, but who hindered you? He said, in Christ, the only thing that counts, watch this, is faith working through love. What really matters is do you believe in Jesus Christ? And as you're serving him, are you doing it in love? This is, this is so wonderful for me. Let me show you why this is so wonderful to me. One of my favorite chapters is what I'm turning to, which is 1 Corinthians 13. And I just feel led to read this real quick. Paul says to this body of believers, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love, watch this, I have become sounding brass or a clangling cymbal. I'm just making noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, to be sacrificed as a martyr, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Jesus Christ freed us to love. That's how Paul is trying to get them to see as we go to this last section. He said, brothers and sisters, if I'm still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? He said, I'm not preaching that. If, it, if in that case, the offense of the cross have been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Watch this. Rather serve one another humbly in love for the entire law. This is the heart of the lesson right here. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Love was the most compelling need in the Galatian church as evidenced by the fighting and bitter strife among the saints. The sharp and bitter tension likely arose between those who had succumbed to the heresy or the false teaching of the legalists and those who had 
not. Paul sympathized with the latter group, but recognized that without love, they could not win over those who were convinced otherwise. Conflict without love results in continuing friction and distraction from the focus of Christ Jesus. Let me just say this real quick. Satan is going to continually to send stuff our way to get our focus off Christ, to get our focus off love, to get tied up in rules and regulations and how this church does this, but we do this, or how this person does this, but I do this, and this is division and so much. Satan sends a sharp sword through the middle of the church to try to sever believers, and he uses ways that are unbelievable. I'm, I'm amazed at the craftiness of Satan and the methods that he used, the devices, the strategies to divide believers from loving one another. So many different denominations, so many different beliefs. You, you do it this way, but we do it this way. Well, whose way is right? And the Galatians, you had a group who had not been circumcised then you had a group who had been circumcised who was right. And Paul was saying, it don't matter if you're circumcised or if you don't. What really matters is do you have faith in Jesus and is it being expressed in love towards your brother and sister? You want to know what the gospel is preaching? You want to know what the law is saying? For the entire law, all of the Old Testament, whew, my God, is fulfilled in keeping this one command. You go love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do you love yourself? If you love yourself, Jesus says, and Paul said it too. You go love your neighbor as you love yourself. But you can't do that unless you love God with all of your being. When you fall in love with God, I'm closing y'all. You going to fall in love with you. And if you love God with all your being and you love yourself, you can't help but love your neighbor <laughs> because you realize how much God has done for you. You realize how much he's forgiven you. How can you hold the grudge? How can I hold the grudge? No matter what the grudge is, if I've been forgiven for all of that stuff, and I told the church last week, and some of y'all heard me, some stuff I'm taking to the grave. Some stuff y'all ain't going to never know about. <laughs> God didn't tell me to tell it all. Some stuff he didn't forgive me and it's just between me and him. But I'm commanded to love. I've been, watch this, I've been free to love. He untangled and he's continually untangling the lies of Satan over my life that's condemning me, that's pressing me down. That's telling me I'm not enough. That's telling me my life don't count. That's telling me I'm not going to make it. That's telling me that God is through with me. That's telling me God is mad at me. He's untangling the lies in your life and mine. And he's freed us to live. I close with this. The section says... This week, consider those with whom you may have engaged a heart, a hearted debate over some spiritual point or biblical issue and left with a feeling that the conversation did not end well. Pray for the Spirit's help to work toward a conversation of reconciliation. 
humbly accept a place of mutual understanding that begins with a respectful hearing of the other person's position and end with a focus on the points of agreement so that peace and love, the love of Christ may abide between you. And then it says, plan an activity that will unite and engage other believers in some shared meaningful task for Christ. The project could involve spiritual gift development, outreach ministry, providing meals or supplies, or some other way to demonstrate the love of God in your community. These are some, some beautiful, beautiful points. But the whole point of this lesson is, without love, our life is nothing. That's what Paul was telling us. Jesus Christ freed us to love. You want to know what God's will is for you today? Go out and love somebody in his name because of the love he's given you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, give us clarity for your purposes and conviction of our sins. May our focus be on you rather than only on ourselves, our needs, wants, and desires. Help us to find a new joy in serving you and others. Lord, help us to walk in the freedom of Christ. Help us to believe that we are truly forgiven for every sin forever. Help us to believe you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And help us to realize that no matter what amount of work or rituals or deeds that we do, none of those things justify us. But you said that Abraham believed God and it was accounted for righteousness. Lord, help us to believe in Jesus Christ. His life, his death, burial, and resurrection. And may we cling to him with all we have. And believe that his payment is enough. In Christ's name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much again. This is Frederick Robinson, youth pastor of Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. What a Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Sunday School Review Lesson 12. And again, we've been freed to love. Amen. Temperature stations will be at the church if you're coming out. Mass, the pews have been marked. Y'all have a blessed day. Smile today. Don't live in bondage. And as you give God the praise on this Sunday, remember you've been freed to love. Be blessed.